Explaining the excitement that I have for this pattern would be very, very difficult, so I won't even try. I'm just over the moon. It's simple, it's beginner friendly, it's beautiful, it comes in a short version or a long version, or you could cut it anywhere else in between there. There's instructions in the pattern on how to lengthen or shorten it depending on your preference. Mmm, it's a good one. The pattern will be linked down below as well as in my Etsy shop. Today I'm going to be making a size 8. I'll be using a cotton. The cotton is pretty thin, so I will be fully lining it, and I I will be making the short version. I have also made the maxi version, which I have right behind me. It pairs really, really beautifully with the Calvin crop, which is also available in my Etsy shop. So you should definitely check that out if you have not already. This pattern is really quick and simple. I almost debated not doing a YouTube tutorial for it. But that being said, I want this to be as accessible as possible. Just like with all of my other patterns, we have detailed instructions, detailed illustrations. All of these things are really, really important to me. So even if you're a beginner, you should be able to tackle this project, no problem. It's a really, really beautiful wardrobe staple. It goes well with so many other items that I have in my wardrobe and hopefully items that you have in your wardrobe as well. I'm gonna be honest, I have not historically been a skirt girly. Skirts aren't really in my wardrobe. I normally do like trousers or jeans or dresses. So skirts are a new territory for me. But when I made this long line version and I paired it with some chunky shoes, it felt really, really me. And I think it's probably one of the first times I've put on a skirt, probably since I was in like junior high and thought, wow, this really feels like an outfit that I would want to wear out and I would feel comfortable wearing out. So anyways, all of that to say that I hope this pattern resonates with you. I hope you love it as much as I do. Now let's go ahead and get straight into the tutorial. We're going to start by cutting out all of our pattern pieces. I'm using the projector file to project the pattern straight onto my fabric. But if you don't have a projector, you can also use the print at home file to print your pattern at home or send the large format file to have it printed at a copy shop. When you're cutting, be sure to transfer all of your darts. I like to cut notches at the top of the dart and put a pin at the bottom of the dart to indicate where I need to start and stop my stitching. Now once all of our pieces are cut out, it's time to sew our darts. This is a ruler, but it's actually just a piece of paper that has been laminated. This straight edge is going to be my guide. Now on your presser foot, there should also be guides. I like to use this middle guide, so I'll move the needle over to the middle, and that will help me guide the needle next to the ruler. Something else I like to do is to take this needle, and I like to reposition the needle so that it's sideways like this, because that's just easier for me to see. It's also easier for me to pull out. Then we're going to take our ruler. We're going to start at the very, very top where those notches are, and then we're going to align the corner here with that needle. Now all we're going to do is sew next to this dart here. Now at the very end of that dart, we have these tails. We're just going to hand tie off those tails. It's important that we hand tie it off and we don't backstitch, because if we backstitch, sometimes you can get a really funny point at the bottom. Then we're just going to snip those threads on either end. And there we have a beautiful dart. That's what your dart should look like at this stage. Now we're gonna go ahead and do all of the rest of the darts. Okay, once all of those darts are sewn up, it is time to press them. I'm gonna be using a pressing ham. I feel like you get the best, most beautiful finish with this. However, if you don't have a pressing ham, that's okay. I just really like using this rounded edge so that the corner of the dart is not pointy. So the dart is right here and we are going to be pressing the dart towards the center front of the garment. So you wanna make sure that it's lying in the correct direction. Then you're just going to press this. I highly, highly recommend using steam. It really helps get a beautiful finish. And once you're done, this is what your dart will look like. You're going to do the same thing for the back darts. The only difference is that instead of pressing towards the center front, you are pressing towards the center back. Once all of your darts are done and they're pressed, we're going to take our back skirt piece and we're going to take our front skirt pieces and with right sides together, 
we will pin them in place. I'm actually going to use clips for this because I find that it's easier. Sometimes I like clips, sometimes I like pins. It totally just depends on how I'm feeling that day. But today we're going to use clips. So we will match up the top here, then we will match up the bottom here, then we're just going to pin all the way down. Make sure that you're matching the notches on the side seams as well. Then same thing goes for this other side. We are going to pin the top, then we'll pin the bottom, and we will pin everything else in between. Next up, we are going to sew these side seams with a one centimeter seam allowance. You're going to leave these center front pieces completely open. So just go ahead and sew these side seams. If you are lining your garment, you're going to do this exact same process for both the outer as well as the lining pieces. Okay, so this is the point where things are going to change a little bit if you're lining your garment versus if you're not lining your garment. The first thing is that if you're not lining your garment, the side seams either need to be serged or zigzag stitched. Essentially, you wanna finish those inside seams because they're not gonna be enclosed by a lining. So because you've actually now sewn those seams together, you won't be able to press them open like you will if you're lining the garment. So instead, you're going to press those seams towards the center back of the garment. Now, the only other thing that's a little bit different is how you're going to finish the outer edges of the garment. So if you're not lining your garment, what you're going to do is you're going to serge or zigzag stitch all the way around the outer edge of the garment. You don't have to worry about that top waistband area because it is going to be encased with your binding. So you'll just go ahead and finish all of those outside edges and then you'll turn them under by one centimeter and press them in place then simply top stitch them. All of this is detailed in the instructions with illustrations so it should be pretty easy to follow. Now if you're lining your garment, you are going to press those side seams open. The reason that we're doing this is because then there's going to be less bulk at those seams. If you're not lining your garment, you can go ahead and skip this step and move on to preparing the waist ties. Now for those of you who are lining your garment, you are going to take your fully constructed outer piece as well as your fully constructed lining piece. You are going to lay them on top of each other with right sides facing. Then you're going to pin or clip all the way around the garment except for that top waistband seam. That's going to be encased by your waist ties so you don't need to worry about that until the next step. Now once all of your pins or clips are in place, you are simply going to sew all the way around with a one centimeter seam allowance. Be sure that you don't sew that top waistband edge closed. Now, once that's all done, you're going to flip your garment right sides out. Then you're gonna press all of those seams in place. Once that's all pressed, you're going to top stitch those edges in place. This will keep the outer and the lining laying really, really nicely, even after lots of washes and wear. Now we're gonna set the main part of our skirt aside and start working on the waistband. To do this, we're going to take all four waistband tie pieces and we're going to align that short edge of each piece and sew them together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Basically, you're creating one very, very long strip that is going to tie around your waist. Now we're going to prepare the waist ties by pressing them the same way you would press bias tape. So to start out, you're going to fold and press the entire strip in half lengthwise. This may take quite a bit of time because it is a very, very long strip, but it's going to make sewing the waist ties to the garment a whole lot easier if we do all of this pressing now. Next, you're going to use that center press seam as a guide and you're going to take those outside raw edges and turn them to meet the middle and press those in place. If you have a bias tape maker, you can also use that. There are a few fancy kinds out there, but what I'm using is basically just this tiny device that helps fold the fabric the way it's supposed to be folded before you press it. It's a really inexpensive little gadget and I highly, highly recommend that you invest in one if you're planning to make lots of bias tape. Now you're going to want to find the center back of your skirt and mark it with a pin. Then you're going to find that center back seam of the waist tie and you're going to pin it to the center back of the skirt. Make sure that you're doing all of this with right sides facing. Once that center back is pinned in place, you're going to pin outwards along the raw edge of the garment. There will be excess on either end, which will tie around your waist. Now once all of those pins are in place, it is time to sew along the top edge of the skirt. You'll do this with a scant 3 8 inch seam allowance. A scant seam allowance basically just means a tiny, tiny bit less than 3 8 of an inch. Now once that's done, we're going to prepare both ends of the waist ties. To do this, we're going to fold the binding with right sides together. Now we're going to sew those short ends together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now 
Next, we're simply going to flip it inside out, which should leave us with a clean edge. Now the last thing we need to do is chop stitch the waist ties in place. We'll want to do this close to the edge, starting at one short edge and ending at the other. You can also opt to add a buttonhole at one of the side seams just below the waist ties. You would use that hole to thread the waist ties through when wearing your garment. That said, this is not a necessary step and I won't be adding it to this specific garment. However, if you find that it would be useful while you're wearing the garment, it's a great thing that you can go back and add at any time. Thank you so, so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed sewing your Jill skirt as much as Evan and I enjoyed making it for you. Here are some pictures from our testers. We actually had 45 testers across the entire size range and they were all amazing. They helped this pattern come to life and I truly couldn't be more thankful for them. Now, if you love your finished garment, we would love to see pictures of it over on Instagram. Be sure to use the hashtag Jill Wrap Skirt if you're sharing over on Instagram and tag Evan and I so that we can see your beautiful makes. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one.